Good day, everyone. Today's video is a project specific video for a student in class to give you an idea of what's going on. Students going to have multiple years of crime data that they want to join to the block group and identify if the same high neighborhoods remain constant over the three to four to five year period. With that, we know how to do a spatial join and we've primarily done a one year and got to count that way. The other way is to add multiple spatial joins to get a summary of what that looks like and then you can identify top neighborhoods across multiple years. With that, I grabbed two years of data. It's other large city data for Little Rock, Arkansas. Below that, you can see that we have our block group and these are just crime rates from a prior video. So what I wanna get is a count of other larceny for each individual block group for each year. So we have 151 block groups in Little Rock, Arkansas without cleaning up too much more. this is just the simple one. But with that, we wanna get a count of how many other larcenies there are per neighborhood for 2020, and then we wanna do 2021. So to do that, my first step is going to be adding in a few fields here. This will just make life easier at the end. If you're familiar with some of this, there's other ways to do it. This is just to keep constant with what we've covered in class so far. So similar to how we added a column to create a crime rate, similar to the one we have here, this is per 1000 residents. We're gonna add a few fields to make our life easy as well. So to do this, I want a other larceny. Oops. So I'm gonna do OL for 2020. Gonna move this one to short. I don't need a decimal place for it. I'm gonna add another field. This is gonna to be top 10 oh, percent for 2020. This can be short as well. So I'm gonna identify the top 10 neighborhoods for 2020, and then again in 2021, or top 10%, I should say. So keep in mind, if we have 151, it's about uh, 15 neighborhoods that we're gonna pull and identify as our top 10%. Next, our other larceny of 2021, short, and then same follow-up of top 10%, 2021. And we're gonna dummy code our top 10s and I'll show you how we're gonna walk through that. Once you've added your fields, make sure you hop up, click save, and you can close out of your table here. And now if I hop back down here, I now have columns that have no data in it. And this is what I need to do spatial joins and then some selections to identify those top neighborhoods across both years. So to do that, I wanna do a spatial join. So I wanna join our accounts of Larceny to our black group layer. So I'm gonna right click, go into join and relates, I want to do a spatial join. With this, it already picked up other larceny of 2020, and it's already on contain, so my block groups contain points, so that's why I'm doing it that way. The one part that I haven't covered in other videos that I'm going to recommend doing here is just cleaning up the output that's joined with it. So right now, I don't care about the incident date and the other crime characteristics, because at the end of the day, this is an aggregate based on each neighborhood. So if I brought in incident date, as it shows here, it's actually only gonna bring in the first one and that's gonna be the same for all of these. I don't need these, so I'm just going to click on these red X's and we're good to go here. I'm gonna show one additional option that you could do if you didn't wanna make the fields and you kinda of wanted to make it as you go. You could do an additional field. I'm just gonna say join count 2020 and I'm gonna do it as a count and I'm gonna add a source. And I want this to be, everything has, this is similar to if you think about back to Excel and we had a pivot table. Everything has an incident number. So I want a count of how many incident numbers there are per block group in this layer. So if I check that box, add selected, it's now gonna give me a count of how many incident numbers there are per block group. And it's gonna create a new field for me called join count. It's gonna be duplicate or replicate of another one that we're gonna make, but I'm gonna show you another way to do it just if you wanna get advanced with it. Click okay. Adding this in, and it looks like it brought over everything with it. No, it didn't, sweet. So we have our join count here and our join count that we added. So at the end, you can see this is the variable that we created and it made it for us as we progressed or ran it. The join count is the one that automatically generates if we did not do this join count. So to do this, mostly what we've worked with is always the join count. If we did multiple join counts, it's gonna have a one, two, three, four, so on, depending on how many spatial joins that we did. 
This is why I had the student already walk through and make individual columns ahead of time, because now we can just copy over some of these data points. So I'm gonna right click on that 2020 count. I'm gonna calculate the field and I'm actually gonna make it equal to the join count. Hit add, click okay. And now you can see we have an other larceny count for calendar year of 2020 based on our join count here. So we're in good shape there. The next step is I wanna identify my top 10% of all neighborhoods in Little Rock for other larcenies. So if I just click downwards, keep in mind it's the top 15. So if I just scroll here, I have 15 selected and key to this, and it just happened to work out this way is these 20 or these 15 have no repeating values at 15. So they're unique values above. So these are truly the top ones. So if I were to right click on our top 10% as these are highlighted, calculate field. And I don't want that to equal that. So I'm gonna clear it out. I'm just gonna put one here. I want those equal to one. Click okay. And now the ones that are highlighted here in blue are dummy coded to be a top 10%. So our top 15 neighborhoods for other larceny in this situation. Now I wanna clear that out. And now we have 2020 done. So we're gonna repeat the same steps for 2021. And then we can compare which ones are both high, which ones have variation. So with that, I'll turn off 2020, turn on 2021. And we're gonna do a similar count at this point. Keep in mind, if you're working on a lab computer, when you do a spatial join, it'll oftentimes create a new layer. Mine's not set up to do that. So if I hop in here, I could remove my join at this point, but I'm just gonna do another add spatial join. And I'm gonna show you what happens when we just leave it the same. So I'm gonna do 2021 contains, I'm going to delete these out just to make it easier. and a bit cleaner for when it comes over and it's easier to work with that way. I'm gonna leave one because the last time I clicked out of it, it added them all back in like that. That's why I don't like that little part of this. So I'm just gonna leave the year in it. And that's, I've made this video a couple times and anytime I delete all of them, knowing that the join count is coming over, it auto fills back into it, but a pain in the ass, but I'm gonna leave it in year even though I'm not gonna use it. Click okay. And now if I scroll to the right, I'm going to have another join count field. This is why if you were looking at it, how do you make sense of two join counts? And I just know off the top of my head, since I knew the order of what I did these in, this is 2021 and this join count is 2020. But say you came back a week, a month, a year later, and you looked at this, it's the oh shit moment. And that's why I prefer to either add an output field that's getting me the same thing, or just create a new field within the table itself that equals that one on the spot. So I know 2021, I'm gonna right click on this one again, calculate field, and it's gonna be that last join count. So remove the one, add this in, hit apply, and it's going to now generate a count for me of those same neighborhoods for it. Similar to before, I wanna identify my top 10%, so my top 15. I had it in descending count based on 2020, so I wanna do it in descending count based on 2021. I'm gonna identify my top 15 again. Hopefully there's no repeating values. And we just so happened to luck out again that at 15, so our top 10%, it's 33. So if this 33 was in 16, we would actually have to grab that because that would be an arbitrary or subjective break on what neighborhood was top. But we lucked out in this point. Again, since we identified our top 10%, right click, calculate field, and we wanna make this one equal to one. Hit apply and we're okay. Looking at this now, and I'm gonna hit clear. You can see, and I'm gonna turn off the crime points. Just by looking at our top 10%, we can see that we have differences across the two years. I'm gonna pull this up so we can see just the top 15 or 15 neighborhoods for 2021. If we look at our top 10, we can see one, two, three, four, five. There's a difference of five neighborhoods across the calendar year of 2020 to 2021 based on that. Now you can make two different maps if you wanted to display based on this. So if I wanted to change my symbology, if it's gonna let me, here we go. 
come back, I'm going to change it to my top 10% of 2020. We have those. I'm going to copy and paste this layer. So copy, I'm going to paste. And then my other one, I'm going to change it to 2020. Oh, there we are. But instead of doing a quantile map or a graduated color, you can do a simple unique value or bivariate colors. There's only two quantities to it. So you have options of what it's trying to work on in it. But for unique values, we're going to change it to, and I hate that it's auto updating that way for it. There it is, 2020. Keep in mind, I'm going back now because I did not like how that updated and then change our FIPS to 2020. Oops, sorry about this, it's getting sloppy at the end. But we either have greater than equal to zero and then everything else is one. Uh, if anyone noticed what I did, I need my top 10%. Turn these off so we know where our 10 neighborhoods are for 2020. And now if I go in for 2021, change my classes to two, change this to the top 10%. It will update the color for me and I'm going to make this one red. And I don't have the layer turned on yet. Let's get that done. So we can see if we do it this way, where the difference is when we just turn on and off our layers across. So where the reds overlapping, we know we're okay. And if you ever wonder, well, it'd be even better if I can see some of the transparency to it. So red is on top here. So if I come into my transparency level, I can mess with the turn to where it becomes almost orangish. So if I do 50%, close enough, you can see where the orange is, is overlap, where if it's yellow, it's top 10% uh, for 2020, and where it's red, it's top 10% for 2021. Again, pol apologies for getting a little sloppy at the end with how the symbology worked. And I'll walk you back through it. So I made the same layer twice. I change it to display in graduated colors, only the top 10% of 2021 and 2020. It's only one class, so I only want the values that have the one. That's what we coded in it. Once I change it to red and yellow, I came up to the feature layer and changed the transparency of my one on top to make it orange. And the orange represents the neighborhoods that had overlapping high values of other larceny from calendar of 2020 and 2021. The discrepancy where you see red and just yellow are differences across those two years. So again, it's an easy way to identify which ones are different across that. If you wanted to say you had a huge file and you wanted to know how many there were and you didn't want to eyeball it, this is where you could go into your table and do a select by attribute. And it would be where your top 10% of 2020 is equal to one and where your top 10% of 2021 is also equal to one. Hit apply, and you know that 10 of your neighborhoods were 10 out of 15, so you have about 66% of that were consistently high in other larceny from calendar year of 2020 to 2021. You could do this for multiple years to look at the consistency of this. There's other ways to do it, but given the skills and the tools that the students are familiar with, this is one way to go about displaying that and creating a kind of final product of stability or movement of crime over time when it comes to high crime neighborhoods. Keep in mind, block groups and Little Rock. If there's any questions, feel free to reach out. Until next time, take care.